Welcome back to the house on Irongate Street. It looks like Helena has finished outfitting her second floor boudoir. Just like the first floor, she stuffed the room with all kinds of goodies. Notice the washstand with its steampunk lamp, hanging towel, and soap. Of course, I'll show you how to make those. The room is packed with cool steampunk clothing. There is a lovely vanity made from a kit with matchbox drawers. Flanking the mirrors are steampunk lamps. On the vanity are cool perfume bottles, powder boxes, and compact cases. In the center of the room is a beautiful marble bathtub. So in addition to this video, I've created a separate technique video showing the faux marble paint technique I used. The cabinet in the back is loaded with perfume bottles, a lovely box, a fan, and a hand mirror. Stained glass hanging screens can be slid open or closed and run on a track made from a straw. A lovely fretwork screen is a great place for hanging additional clothes. And in front of the screen are stacks of suitcases, a gramophone, and a pair of boots. And there's Gizmo, Helena's cat, sitting on the balcony. Let's get started walking through each of the items in detail. The largest piece of furniture in the room is this corner bookcase. And it's wood. It's all put together like this, except for the exception of the finial here that I've, or that I've added to the top of it. And then um, I painted it with two different colors. One is uh, antique white. It's kind of a creamy, buttery color. And then the other is a celery green. And that's why I painted like the insides and accents areas. And once I painted it, then I came in and gave it a coat of Mod Podge to um, give me a smoother surface because I'm going to antique it with a wax. And um, because it's wood and I'm using acrylic paint, it may not be as smooth as it needs to be. So I want to be able to push the wax around on the piece and have more control about how much there is and where it is. So if I had not uh, sealed it uh, with something, and it doesn't have to be this, but something that would give it a, a nice smooth um, surface, it would have been harder for me to do that. Now the wax I'm using is um, Annie Sloan Soft Wax. It's a dark wax and it's made for um, to go along with their chalk paints to paint furniture. And um, you don't have to buy as big of containers as I, I've done a lot of furniture so um, I have a big container but they sell like little small sample four ounce samples. And I like using it for the antiquing because it's um, it's it's transparent so it's like some art waxes, um, they will they will give you color, but they will completely cover what's underneath. So you, the new color will completely block the old. So I just want to make this look a little darker, a little more vintage, maybe just a little bit more distress. So I like to use the wax. And since um, chalk paint, if you've ever worked with it, it, it the paint when the paint goes on, it gives you a pretty smooth surface, and then that gives you the ability to move the wax around. And so. Again, that's why I coated the, um, the uh, bookcase with the Mod Pod before I'm going to start putting on the wax. And if you were doing a piece of furniture, you'd use a soft cloth. But this is such a miniature thing. I'm just using a piece of Kleenex tissue paper. And all you want to do, and I'll do it on the back because you, you can see it better. All you want to do is get a little bit of wax on there and then just start rubbing it into the, um, the piece. And with that slick surface, I can remove as much as I want, I can add what I want, and I can just keep putting more and more until I kind of get the color I want. And you notice it's not really covering up the yellowish cream color, it's just kind of darkening it. So I just continue to do this until I get it as dark as I want. And I can go back in and do multiple coats. Now when you're done, this stuff is going to dry really nice and hard. So it's a really, it's a really good coating. You know, you don't have to worry about doing any kind of sealing afterwards. And so just keep rubbing it in. And then of course I'll do the same thing to the green. I'll come in and distress that too. And all the groove areas. And I will just keep working and adding more and more wax until I get it as dark as I want. So I will keep doing this and then I'll come back and show you the finished look. Here you see the finished cabinet full of all kinds of goodies and we'll start here at the top. Um, the 
underneath the um, pediment that I added, I called it a finial earlier, but it's a pediment. I have a piece of filigree. You see me use this type of filigree all the time. I like it. It's pretty and it's easy to bend and stuff for other, other parts of the project. And then the first shelf to, at the top here, you can see some perfume bottles. Over here, I'm just, all I'm doing basically is stacking beads and gluing them together. And then down here, you can see I've used some beads, but I've also put it on a bead cap to give it a little height and, you know, just, just to dress it up a bit. And then I kind of made this little platform stand. I've got a bead cap in here turned upside down and then I have a piece of filigree on top of that and then I have all my beads perfume bottles at the top. Then if we go to the next um, the next uh, section, the center section, here I've got uh, more beads uh, glued together for perfume bottles and I've also used this pewter plate to have something to set it on. I just I think it looks cute to have things instead of just sitting everywhere, just grouping them on plates and things like that. Then I have this really beautiful little clock, another perfume bottle, and then uh, I have a fan from the deco collage sheet, and I have kind of uh, popped some of the items out and, and kind of given it a little shine by putting some glossy accents in on some of the areas on the uh, fan. And then at the bottom here, um, I've got a mirror, hand mirror, and then this little box. Now to make the box, all I did was I cut a, a um, matchbox in half and then wrapped it with paper. I added a piece of filigree. I added, added some um, gold stickers and then just this little knob in the front and then again some more uh, decorative uh, metallic stickers. And then of course you see another, another um, bottle, a uh, perfume bottle made out of beads. And then I have another decorative piece of filigree at the bottom. Now you'll notice I put this in the room in the corner, uh, but what I didn't do was put it all the way against the corner because if I had done that, then I would not be able to open and close the um, stained glass panel that's on the back wall. One of the other larger elements of the room are is a screen. And um, the, the uh, frame of the screen comes in a kit of three. And then, you know, you can, you can do pretty much whatever you want with this chipboard. I've, I've been working on painting it the same kind of creamy buttery color that I painted the cabinet. And, you know, there's options. Uh, you can also get a, a filigree piece that can be used with the screen. And I will be doing that. And then you can also, um, say, put a mirror behind here. Or you could do a stained glass piece, which I will be doing that, like I did with the door. I'm going to be um, framing that as well. So it's, you've got lots of options. So these come in a set of three, and then the filigree pieces come separately. So then you just buy whatever you like. And I have painted mine a green color because in the in the um, in the wallpaper there are some small hits of hints of green. So I will be using a combination of things here and I'll be distressing the uh, frames just like I did the cabinet. Now here I have uh, two of the frames and the fretwork and I'm going to use these two as a folding screen. I only went with two because um, I want to have room to uh, put everything in the room and I was worried with three it might be too crowded and I've painted them exactly the same way as I did the um, cabinet the corner cabinet and uh, you can see the difference between the paint uh, without the wax and then here is the screen with it waxed and so what I'm going to do is use some hinges to connect the two together and I'm not going to they have holes if you want to uh, put like a, a brad or something through there. I'm not going to do that because these are going to be glued in place and so I don't really need them to be that secure in terms of moving the, the screens back and forth. But if you were if you were going to um, be doing that then then I'd suggest maybe securing them more than just with glue. Um, and then uh, I'll be hanging all kinds of clothing on, on them after that. So for the uh, French doors, I decided to build something that would be a sliding screen as opposed to using curtains or something like that. And I thought you might enjoy learning how to do this. Um, you can see I'm using the same frames I used before for the uh, folding screen and the difference is that I have used a piece of stained glass, faux stained glass, 
inside of it instead of the fretwork, and I will have this for you to download on the blog. And I did exactly like I did the door in the very first one, so I'm not going to go through the technique because I've already done that. And then um, when I was looking at the height between the ceiling and the stairs that are right underneath uh, the French doors, I decided I needed to shorten this a little bit, so I cut off just the little ends. I do kind of like the decorative area down there, so I just cut off just the, what you might think of as the feet. I cut those off. And uh, then you can see I painted it the same green as I did the other pieces, furniture pieces, and I used the wax to distress it. And so the next thing is you need to find something to attach to the top of your screens. And in this case, I'm using a piece of filigree and it, you, I've got it in place here, but not glued. So you need to um, uh, figure out what you want to use. You don't have to use filigree. You could use decorative paper, um, just anything that you can make a loop out of. And this filigree is pretty easy to bend. And here I have it bent. And what you want to do is you want to bend it so that the two ends are even and that you have an open area at the top. And that open area is for either a wooden skewer or for um, a wooden dowel, whatever you want to use. And that dowel, that piece needs to be cut just probably slightly less than the, uh, the uh, width of each of these screens. So I think the screens are two and a half inches, so I think this is, I cut two and a quarter. So it's just a little bit smaller than that. And you wanna, you wanna when you glue this on, of course you're gonna glue both of the tabs on, and then you wanna pinch this down as much as you can and pinch that down on the skewer so that's only as wide as the actual skewer. And then, um, and you can even glue that in place too, which is probably what I will do. And then you just height from height wise, you decide how far up or down you want this to be. But you don't want it to go so far down that this, this is rubbing against this. So you want a little bit of distance here. Now we need a track and this, this is what's gonna run inside the track. And what I use for a track is a straw more on straws. Um, I picked the straw because it's round, it's hollow, and when it's cut, because you need to create an, a cut in this to be able to insert this in and move it back and forth, it keeps its shape. So um, what you need is a straw that is long enough that when you open these, that they move away from covering the window. And so that means that you need at least a 10 inch uh, long straw. This one is slightly bigger than 10 inches, which is fine. And then, um, because you're looking at five inches when they're closed, and then you need another two and a half and two and a half on each side in order to move those away. So that gives you the 10 inches. So then what you need to do is very carefully um, cut a slit in the straw. And I just find that scissors works best for me. I've, I've done it with a X-Acto knife, but I, tend to sometimes cut through the whole thing, which you don't want to do. You just want to just want to do the edge and you want to cut this as straight as you can so that your opening is straight. And it's going to stay curled. Now, the other important thing is you got to make sure, see we've got our cut now you gotta make sure that whatever you use here is not too big to fit in this. So you're gonna be threading this in here into your straw. And it's gonna sit in there like that. And then once this is glued, it won't be so, so wobbly. But then using the straw, you can move back and forth and open and close your screens. And then the other thing you're going to want to do probably is put stops on the end so that you don't go all the way out with this. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to use um, a couple of um, B caps and these little, these little um, wood pieces here. They just happen to fit in the hole of the bead cap like that. And then I will come in and put these on the ends. And that will be my stop so it wouldn't go any further than that. And then, of course, I would thread both of these in here. And then this gets glued to the, uh, to the wall. Now, the vanity is a kit, so that makes it easy to put together. If you look at the four pictures, the one on the top left is the basic outside structure. 
of the uh, vanity and the picture that you see next uh, that's with it put together and then there's also an additional piece that's in the, towards the top that's not shown in the first picture but all the other pieces are plus if you look at the bottom um, the bottom uh, left hand side you see the front pieces uh, at the bottom at the top now the nice thing about the bottom piece is that helps you um, have room to add things like feet so that they won't interfere with the boxes themselves. And then on the uh, lower right, you see two more pieces. Now that is the uh, top, which you can use as a lid that can be hinged and lifts up so that you can get into um, the bottom area there, right underneath the, uh, the uh, mirror. Okay, here you see the um, vanity uh, finished and um, you saw how the kit goes together and you end up with the center section and all you have to do in that center section is to just slip in match boxes and these are just the standard match boxes they usually come 10 in a set you know they're anywhere from 99 cents to a dollar and something at most stores and so it will take six of those and then um, basically I just painted them and uh, lined the inside with some uh, Kind of a velvety paper in here for a, a suede kind of paper that's that kind of matched the color scheme that i had and then i used my matchbox uh collage sheet uh fronts you can see the sheet has all kinds of uh, different sets of fronts that you can use to just kind of dress that up and you could also add some faux knobs if you wanted to which will help you pull this in and out if you've watched my other tutorials about making matchbox chests you'll see that um, it's a whole lot easier to get these matchboxes in and out if you put something on the outside that goes all the way through to the inside. But in the case of this, I didn't, I didn't do that. I just decided that I'm going to leave a couple of these open and I have some lace that I put in them to look like there's clothing or something inside the drawer. Now you can also see I've covered this with this paper. It looks sort of, um, I think it looks a little bit like stonework. Um, the kind of pattern in it and the color scheme went really well with the other yellow the buttery yellow that i was using and then I, of course i also put some feet on the bottom i think that makes it dresses it up and, and pops the whole thing up a little bit and i think it makes it look a little bit fancier and then on for the mirror here um, i painted this a brown color it's actually this color here it's called uh, chocolate sprinkle and then after that i came in and used the metal leak wax and I'll show you this you've seen me use this before and I just rubbed it with my finger it's really really soft it stays nice and wet and it dries really really well and, and um, you know it won't smudge or anything after it's done and then what I've done in the mirror itself I've used um, a sheet of material that looks just like a mirror and that's what it's made for and I put a piece of that in in the back behind this whole area now in terms of what's on the top you can see again I have done some beads that are sitting on a, 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 a this little filigree cap sort of thing and then these are also beads too I, I thought they looked like compacts or maybe makeup makeup um, things that you might you know or some some little uh, container that you might put something in again I have another mirror here hand mirror and in the hand mirror I cut a little piece of the same mirror that I used for the for the main mirror on the vanity and I put that inside there and then you can also see that I have a picture frame here with a picture of a man maybe that's um, maybe that's uh, some significant other and then I have used some glossy accent inside to make it look like it's glass now you have a choice on this where you can um, have the the top open up now I've got a lot of stuff on the top of this so it's, I can't open it very far but I have hinged it here on both sides and you can see that in the larger picture. Then um, the back part here gets glued in place. And then I glued the hinge onto this piece. And then after that dried, I glued the hinge onto this piece. And then now you can open it up. Like I say, I can't open it very far because this stuff is in the way. But um, if, you, if you wanted to have it open, you might keep that in mind where you place things or don't glue them in place permanently so you can get inside here. So then you've got this whole inside area, which I again lined with this um, this buttery color of uh, faux suede paper, the same stuff that I used inside the matchboxes. Then I decided I would add some steampunk type lighting, and that's what you see here. 
And basically, it is just uh, it's just a little piece of, of metal that I've used. You can see that in the picture. And I took some Christmas tree lights and these little feet. I use these all the time. These little these little uh, box feet. Um, I glued the light inside of there and then attached that to the the metal that you see in the picture. Now. Um, I think I mentioned this before when I use these, but I thought I'd just go ahead and show you what I do. If you just cut these off, about right here, you need heavy scissors to do it, then it'll just pull right out. So then you can do whatever you want. I think it was the, um, I think it was the chandelier on the first floor. I used these, but I did it upside down. So in this case, I just glued those into these metal bits here. I decided to make the fan because I figured if you lived in a place called Steamtown that it was probably steamy and hot and you'd want something to stay cool. And here you can see um, a picture of all of the uh, components of the fan. And uh, I first started by taking uh, one of the pieces of filigree. In this case, these were from my stash and they're slightly curved, uh, concave. and. Um, I flipped it over and put a piece of filigree, glued that in place um, to act as a support for the center section. Now the filigree came from my stash, but Alpha Stamps carries a filigree that you've seen me use in other components of this project that would work perfectly for this. So I know you can get that if you, if you want to make this. And then I started to build the blade part of the fan and I used these little toggles I thought they looked like blades if you glued them all together and you saw me use these toggles on the fireplace. That was what I used to keep the back panel of the um, fireplace in place so that you could get to all the lighting. So I glued those in a circle around the clock part that you see in the next picture uh, that has a spring in the center. I glued those in a circle around that and then the, the other little clock part that has the little spiky things on it. I glued that on the top so that kind of made my basic center fan section and now I glued that on top of the filigree that is already glued on the round um, the other round piece of filigree and then came back in and took the second piece of filigree and then glued that on top and so um, now you get the basic uh, the basic fan and then I just thought well you know I want to add some more stuff to it so I used a couple of little propellers, three bladed brass propellers. I glued those to the center and then added a, um, a little brass foot to kind of cover it up, cover the hole where it's put together and also to help hide the glue. Now I want to talk about adding the base. As you can see from the picture, I have used several components and here you can see the clock part and then this gear type thing with the metal part and then you've got this metal rod and then it has, it already had these little things that stuck out on the side. So I thought that would work really well when I was looking at that. I thought, oh, I'll put a couple more of the, um, of the propellers on those and then also add the little box feet on the edge of those and those will keep them in place so that way I figured okay you got a fan going at the top now you got little fans going on the side and then to get this base piece attached to the top I've used pin nibs and the pin nibs are nice because they're um, they're curved or, or concave in the inside and that way they would fit on either side of the of the uh, metal rod there so I've glued them to either side and then they come as a point here and then I also use this piece so this piece went on top of the metal rod I'll turn it here sideways maybe you can get a good look at that and then I'll kind of talk about it a little bit more so that went on top of the metal rod and then these went on each side of it and then the tips of the pin nibs go on each side of the fill round filigree in the front and that connected the two pieces together and then I decided to, you know, just to decorate it up a little bit more. And I used some more of my favorite long filigree and the stuff that I told you would work as your center section here for support. You could have used this instead of this piece that I had from my stash. And of course you could put more on it. You could also put some decorative items at the top here if you like.
Now in the house there's a couple of tables. One I set up as a washstand and the other one is a, just a table that sits next to the bathtub with things for the bathtub. The washstand, uh, this was a, a light tan color. I painted it a darker brown and then I used the metallic wax to uh, I rub that all over it. And then you can see I've got a, a pitcher and a bowl and then a, a perfume bottle or maybe some kind of scented whatever. And then now you see the completed uh, steampunk uh, lamp. And then I have a, a little soap dish and soap. I'll show you how I made that. And then I put part of a, a bangle that I cut up, the same kind of bangle I used for the 3D, the 3D, um, the 3D uh, chest set, and a couple of beads and then attached that and that gave me the place to hang the towel. Now the other one, I've got a couple of the books, that's from the Steampunk Explorer uh, collage sheet, and then a couple of bottles. This one I put some powder in it, and then of course again you have the soap and the soap dish. Now the, the soap, uh, how I made that is I just used a candle, a junk candle that I have for whatever I need, and a uh, razor blade. Now if you, if you put this out in the sun for a while, it will get soft. And actually it's not very sunny here today so I couldn't get this as, as soft as it was when I cut the other soap pieces out. But you can just come in with a razor blade and pull out a piece of, uh, a piece of wax and then just simply trim it to be whatever size you want. And you can see this is fairly soft. You know, and then if it's too tall, you can come in and take a little bit more off. And then you end up with something like that. That I think looks a lot like soap. And of course you could use a colored candle if you want to. Now in terms of the uh, towels, what I did is I created a little template, a little starter piece, um, and I'll have this for you on the blog that you can download. And I came in and you can see you've got the band and then you just got very light color here just so you can follow the color. And what I did is I came in with some Mod Podge and you can use whatever glue you wanted. It doesn't matter if it's this glue. And I came in and I just painted that on this little area here. And I, don't worry if you go over because you're just going to cut all that away. I just decided not to cut these completely out and that gave me excess paper to work with. And you want to get this on and then the material that I'm using to give it the towel look, to make it look like fabric, is flocking. And the flocking comes in different colors and once you get your glue on, you know, make sure you got plenty on so that you, it'll stick. It's just a powder if you haven't worked with this and I just sprinkle it on. And then Make sure it's on everything and then dump it off. Now, just to make sure that my line was smooth here, I would use, come in with a toothpick and just kind of push it back so that it, I knew it came up right along the trim line here. Now, I would do one and then do the next one and then do the next one. And I actually applied three coats to this um, when I did it to get the um, texture that I wanted. And then uh, as soon as it dries, you can just paint over it with glue again and then add more of the, um, of the fun flock. Uh, now, if you want to use a different color uh, that comes in lots of colors, uh, what you could do is come in with a colored pencil and color the band here, the decorative band, to uh, coordinate with whatever flocking you're using. Another option for products to do this with is something called Flower Soft. If you're not familiar with that, it's, it's, um, it works the same way as the, the Fun Flock. It's just a very much heavier and it'll give you much more of a terry cloth feel, so you'll get a much more bulky bulky uh, look to the fabric of your towel. Now I printed this on just regular copier paper. You can see it's really thin and the reason being is to help me to, to make sure that after I applied whatever I applied I could still fold it. So once I was done and I have two sizes for you, I have the size of the towel for the tub as you see there and then I have the size for the um, hand towel right here. And as soon as I was done and I had it I don't know if you can come in close and just if you can pick up the texture on that. But as soon as I was done and everything was dry, then I just folded it like you would a regular towel. And um, you could even fold some of these up and stack them up on a table or put them into the um, into the the cabinet like like I had that I have in this project instead of you know as many perfume bottles and stuff like that. So it just it really gives you a realistic looking towel.
For the suitcases, I use three different size chipboard kits. These uh, kits could be used either like I did for suitcases or you could also use them as boxes. Um, and I covered them with various papers that looked like faux suede or uh, faux leather. And then I added different buckles and, and different metal bits that would look like latches and, and opening handles, that sort of thing. And then for the round box, that is just, it can either be like a round suitcase or, uh, you know, it could be like a hat box. And I just used these little round boxes, uh, paper mache boxes, and then again covered that with some of the paper that looked like uh, leather and then added some metal bits to that. Now the gramophone that you see sitting on the top of the suitcases is actually a pencil sharpener. It's metal and the handle actually turns and it makes the record go around. It doesn't have anything to do with the sharpening, but I thought that was really cute. This company makes all kinds of little miniatures like that and they're all pencil sharpeners. So if you want to use them in something like this, I just close the hole on the side where the sharpener is and um, used it as a gramophone. And I'll, in my blog, I'll give you a link to um, where you can find those. And I bought mine on Amazon, but I think you can find them other places online. Now for the uh, burgundy velvet top hat, I came up with a pattern for that, which you will find on my blog post that goes with this video. And you can download that and use it to make uh, top hats if you would like. And the pattern it comes in three pieces. Uh, the, the, the first piece, the brim, you'll see there's the dark area. That, that's the area that you're going to actually see when you're done. And then you see the white area in the middle and then there is the dash line. So what you want to do on that piece is you want to cut out the very center that's inside that dotted line or that uh, dashed line. And then you're going to snip and make little bitty cuts all the way around because those are going to become your tabs and you're going to fold them up. So at the top picture you can see the pattern at the bottom you can see where I have already uh, cut out that center and cut little little um, tabs and then folded those tabs up. Then you see the top piece here you're going to just cut around the tab lines then again make little cuts all the way around to make tabs and these tabs are going to fold down. And the last piece is the uh, the actual side piece and that the the white area that has the tab uh, has the uh, dash lines that's going to be your tab so you cut that out and fold that. Now the first thing I did was um, fold the, uh, the, the side piece uh, according to the tab and you can see how that looks. And then the next thing I did is I turned it upside down. Now the top is the straight part and the bottom of the side is that goes around the brim is the curved. So I turned it upside down so the curved side is up and the flat side is down. And then I took the top piece and I pushed it, I added glue ahead of time, and then I pushed it through down to the bottom of the side piece. And that was like a, I thought that was the easiest way to add it, as opposed to flipping it over and trying to get all those little tabs to go in the top. Um, it's just much easier if you just push it down uh, all the way to the bottom and uh, then press all those little tabs against the inside. And then uh, the last thing is the brim, so I flipped it over and then again adding some glue on the inside of the side round side piece and then uh, putting that on top of the little tabs that are around the brim. Now for my hat I used a uh, burgundy faux suede paper and then I tied a, uh, a, um, a bow around it using a black tool. For this project, I have some new image sets. Uh, first, I have two collage sheets, which are steampunk fashions one and two. And these sheets have dresses and hats and boots. And I also included some body parts in case you want to use them differently than what I'm doing and want to use them more as a paper doll. In addition, there's also a digital kit that you can uh, has all the individual items in it, so it makes it really easy to print just what you want or to print multiples. And it contains all the things in both of the collage sheets. And I wanted to also bring up something else. Every once in a while I get a, a question about sizing the images for the project. 
basically my sheets and my digi kits are already sized for the project. So if you're going to do what I'm doing or something similar, the same size, um, you don't have to do anything to the images. They're already that size. Uh, if I have other sizes, it's usually I include two. I include something larger and then something smaller that fits the project. So um, there's no worries if you are going to do what I did. Of course, if you're doing something else and you want something larger, smaller, then of course, yes, you would resize it for whatever you needed. Now, what I'm doing with the clothing is I'm going to first try to make it look more dimensional. And I did that by printing it, each of the dresses multiple times. And that's when the DigiKit comes in very, uh, very uh, uh, handy because it's easy to print just what you want multiple times. But if you get the, the uh, download version of the collage sheet, well, then it, you can print the whole collage sheet uh, as many times as you want. So um, I just wanted to show you how I'm going to go about doing that. And I'm also going to use uh, a hanger, a wooden hanger, and I have, I have stained these with um, Distress uh, Spray Ink. It's the uh, Vintage Photo. And I didn't spray them. I used a paintbrush and painted the uh, stain on. And these are wood, just like the uh, cabinet was. And uh, I just, you, they come in sets of four. So what I'm going to be doing is making it look like the dresses are hanging on these hangers and I'll have them throughout the room. So first what I needed was a back piece. So something that looks like the dress is on the back so that it looks like the hangers inside the dress. Then I have a full copy of the dress and I'll be gluing those together on the hanger. Of course it'll look a little bit better because I'm working upside down. And then the next thing I decided to do, I kind of look at it and pick it apart and think, okay, what can I do? What can I pull apart? And so then I'll probably add this next and each one of these will be popped up a little bit. And I'm going to use two different things. If I just want it fairly close, but I want a little bit of dimension, I've got some pieces of thick chipboard cut up and that will give me a thinner pop. And then if I want something bigger, I will use um, some either double stick foam tape or pop dots or things that are made to actually pop things up. But when I do things like this, what I probably will do is I will glue this part to the dress and then put something here, a pop dot or something, so that the dress looks like it's flared out like this. And then I will add this on top of that, pop that out a little bit, and then say add this here, and then add the belt back in. I could also cut this out and add that as well. And then some of the dresses I'll be adding metal bits to them to jazz them up even more. And maybe even glossy accents to make things like buttons and, and uh, watches and things that are hanging on them, jewelry. Pop those and, and make those look uh, more dimensional. So I will uh, go through a series here and show you how I constructed each of the dresses in terms of cutting them apart to give you ideas if you want to do the same thing. And um, like I said earlier, there's, there's, there's body parts. So if you want to use these as uh, paper dolls, then you can just add your body parts and have a complete uh, body and dress. So I uh, took pictures of each of the dresses that I used um, with all the pieces. So the first pictures you'll see are the individual pieces. And then I took a picture of them put together so that you can get an idea of how they look. Um, and I can tell you in real life, they're even more dimensional. It's kind of hard to show a three dimensional item in a flat picture. Um, and then some of these I uh, hung on a uh, clothes rack that I built, which I'll talk next about that. And then some of them I, I hung on hooks around the room. And then others of them I uh, hung on the screen. Now, uh, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but all of the pictures that you see in the video and more in terms of all of the things that I built and, and all these pictures, they are all in a, in a, uh, on a link on my blog post and you can just click on the button and it's a big slideshow. So that way, if you just want to refer back to something, you don't want to have to go find it in the video. Um, you can just uh, click on that link and you'll see the pictures there. Because there wasn't that much available wall space with all the other items that I have in the room, I decided to create a little clothes rack to hang some of the dresses on. And um, the base of it is this brass clip. And I chose that because one side is flat, so that would, it would make it easy to glue that against the wall. And then it's got these holes in it. 
And so I decided to uh, use the suspended wire in, in you know, kind of a fancy loop. Now you wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to. You could just put something straight in there, but I thought it just looked pretty. And looped it through the holes in the clip. And then once I had looped it through those holes and put some glue in place, and I also glued on a little bead just to kind of act as a stop. And then, uh, then I just loaded the inside of the clip with a whole bunch of E6000. And once that dried, I added some filigree pieces, uh, these are like griffins, uh, to the sides. You could put anything decorative, and it, it just kind of pretties up the sides, and it also hides all that glue that I have in there. Um, I figured you're going to have some weight, even though the dresses don't weigh that much. Um, you're going to have a lot of weight hanging on that, so I wanted to make sure that they would be secure and stay in place. And of course, whatever. If you're going to use a wire like this and you're going to bend it, you need to use a heavy, very heavy wire. And then in terms of the pole, uh, it was just, it's some of my stash clock parts and it, it's just this uh, pole. And then I added two, uh, two little turns. They're also clock parts, uh, knobs. I put those on the end so they're kind of act as stop so that, the, so that the rod won't slip out. And then, of course, I just glued it to the wall. Here you can see all the components that make up the steampunk lamp. I started by gluing the bead onto the flat piece, which is a clock part. Uh, the reason I did this is once you start adding all the other elements, the bead tends to want to fall over. And so I needed a good flat surface underneath the whole thing so that that would not happen. So you wouldn't have to use that, but whatever you, you have that would make that flat and, and sturdy. Once you do that, then I took, I've got two uh, of the little uh, box feet there, our bead caps, is, you know, could be used for either. I glued one of those into the bead, and then after that, I then took the center of the spring and glued that down into um, that box foot and put the rod in at the same time. So the rod, you're going to need the rod to hold that um that spring down in there because it's not going to want to stay. So you need to glue that all at the same time. Now in terms of the rod, I just happen to have some cotter pins. I took a cotter pin and I wrapped it with some uh, copper wire and the choice was simply I wanted some kind of a rod thing going up into it which you would think would be the electrical piece and it happened to fit through the mouth of the, the, the globe, the um, glass globe that I'm going to put on top. You could use anything that you thought looked like that and that you could stick into that hole. So once I let that dry really good, then I glued the, uh, the glass, um, the glass uh, piece there, that bulb piece, I glued that on top and then added the second uh, bead cap or box foot. And then once that dried really well, then I took the um, the end of the spring, which should be free, and I pulled it up the globe and glued the tip of it into that box foot on the top. And then that way the you get that swirling look of the, um, of the spring around that globe. Now here you can see another version of it. Same thing, it's just a little different bead. Um, that bead's not available anymore but you can get the vertigo one and you can get a brass one that looks exactly like the vertigo gray one, but it's just brass. The last item I need to cover is the bathtub. Um, it is kind of a color brown. It's supposed to be like a wood tub. So I decided that I wanted to change it and I wanted to add the feet, the brass feet that you see there and so it just popped it up and I thought it looked more elegant that way. And then I also did a faux marble paint treatment to this tub. Um, you may have seen me do this before in a tutorial a couple years ago. I'm not going to cover that paint treatment in this video. I have created a separate video that just covers the technique. So um, that way it doesn't get buried in this big, this big video. So in that tutorial, you'll see me walk through uh, how to do it, how to do the whole treatment, and then also talk about how I did it specifically for this tub. So that wraps up the second floor of the house. As usual, uh, Alpha Stamps is carrying pretty much everything I used except for my stuff from my stash. If you hop over to my blog, you'll get more details, photo albums, uh, all the templates that you need, 
uh, information on collage sheets, that sort of thing. And I will leave the link below in, uh, in the description area on YouTube if that's where you're watching this. Uh, there will only be one more segment of this. It's going to deal with the roof. And after that, that's going to be the end of this house. And I'm going to take a little break from steampunk and move on to Halloween. And then after I do some Halloween projects, then I'm going to come back again to steampunk with a steampunk inventor's house.